What's up YouTube, Daniel Carter at Afro Herb Keeper here. Uh, this is a follow-up video to my uh, May Reptile Room video, this will be part two. Uh, I had to cut off part one during editing because the footage was already 30 minutes long and including everything in my room would have made it about 45. If you haven't seen part one yet, uh, there will be a link on the screen for that right now. If you're on mobile, it'll be in the description. Um, and that includes all the reptiles and amphibians, so lizards, snakes, turtles, tortoises, amphibians, stuff like that. Um, and in this video we will be covering the invertebrates, fish, and mammals in my room. So, let's get started. To the right of my amphibians are my fish. I've got two aquariums at this point. Uh, first one over here is a standard 20 gallon tank. It's a community tank. I think I've got six species in here. First and foremost are these rosy minnows, very clearly displaying themselves. Uh, they were initially intended to be feeders, but ended up not being, and I just threw them in this tank. So lucky for them. Up here is one of the white cloud mountain minnows. This may actually be the last one in here. I haven't seen the other in a few days. In the back there you can see one of my coolie loaches. Um, there he goes. Just a little eel-like eel fish. Um, pretty secretive. This olive-shaped lump sticking out of the driftwood here, believe it or not, is actually a snail. It's an olive neridi snail. Uh, I've got one more in this tank somewhere, uh, but they're pretty good at hiding, so haven't seen it in a while. Um, the tank is in a state of disarray. Uh, and that's just because I moved it over, used to be up there on a bookshelf. Um, but I moved it over, all the plants got disheveled, and one of the fish in here doesn't help. It's a very avid burrower, so it uh, just uproots whatever it can. And that fish is actually in the back there. You can see he's burrowed right now. Um, kind of hard to see behind these fish and under the gravel, so I will try to grab him real quick. Here he is. This is my banjo catfish. Um, pretty cool little guys, um, if he weren't so destructive I'd like him a bit more, but he's a very neat little fish, um, I think these are native to South America, I don't remember exactly where, but they imitate a fallen leaf, and if you pick them up they will stand completely still, uh, to further that imitation. Looks like one of the coolie loaches is out as well. Uh, and then somewhere in here, I've got a Pleco, little algae-eating catfish, uh, but I cannot find him at the moment. He's probably just in the back sucking on some algae somewhere. To the right of the community tank is my Senegal Bashir, uh, Polypterus Senegalis, I believe. Uh, he's in a standard 10-gallon with some petrified wood as decor in the back, makes him a nice little cave. Um, he's eating... Ikari uh, sinking carnivore pellets, uh, and these ones are eating uh, tetramen flake food and Hikari algae pellets. But here he is, like I said, he's a Senegal Bashir, um, his name is Pancake, and this is not their natural color, he's an albino, um, and this is probably the most expensive fish I've ever bought, he was just 25 bucks, but uh, he's a very cute little guy, I like him, uh, and he's not nearly full grown, this is... He's only about 4 inches now, should reach 8, 10, 12, somewhere in there. He is chowing down. Over here, under the turtle tank, are my inverts. Uh, I've got a total of, uh, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 non-feeder uh, invertebrates right now. We will start with this guy. This is my Texas Brown Tarantula, uh, A. Hensi. I'm not sure how to pronounce the scientific name, but I've had this guy for about a month. Uh, first Tarantula I've kept permanently, I think. Uh, he's eating pretty well. Let me give you some better light so you can see him a bit better. Um, but yeah, Texas Brown Tarantula, A. Hensi. Um, and he's actually just matured as an adult male. This was his... Uh, last molt, uh, and this is an immature male. You can see he's gotten 
quite a bit darker, a uh, nice raven black color kind of, but he's in a little 2.5 gallon tank, I believe. Um, some cork bark, um, coconut core, and he's got a little web going in the corner. Uh, he's also dug a tunnel under there, but he's eating uh, one little dubia roach about weekly. This tank over here uh, doesn't really have anything in it at the moment. It's just a uh, 2.5 gallon little paludarium. Uh, it's just sitting around waiting for a project or something. Um, down here, we've got some more additions from NARBC. This is one of my Madagascar hissing cockroaches. Um, this one's a male. You can hear him hissing. Uh, and you can tell he's a male because of those little bumps on his head. But, um... These are one of the largest cockroach species, I believe. Um, very personable for a little bug if you uh, can get past the cockroach factor. But these are one of the only insects that produce noise uh, without aid of like their legs or anything. They actually produce it with their breath. Uh, and they do that by sending the air through those little holes on their side. And those are what they breathe through. So I've got four of these. Uh, they're just eating roach chow. Um, just basically, I believe, a mixture of oats and uh, grains and stuff like that. Hopefully they'll breed soon. I'm not keeping them very warm, because I don't really want them to breed that much, but uh, one or two generations of babies would be fine. Um, so like I said, got four of these uh, in here in this little sterilite tub. It's about a uh, foot long, eight inches wide. To the right of the roaches are my desert millipedes. Um, Orthoporus ornatus, I believe. There's one. Um, I got. Oh, there's another. I got these um, on vacation last summer uh, in the Sonoran Desert in Arizona. Um, there are three of these. One, two, uh, three is probably. Yeah, back there. Um, they're doing all right. Um, not all that active. They're a nice, rich chocolate color when they're in the light. Uh, though they're a bit hard to see now. There's his head. But these guys are in the same kind of container on a mixture of coconut core and sand. Uh, they've got some cork bark and bits of moss back there to hide under. Um, very cool little bugs. Uh, they're about four to six inches long, all three of them. Uh, and they get bits of carrot, just vegetable scraps, every now and then. They're not too picky and they are uh, very hardy bugs. I've saved just about the best for last in terms of invertebrates. Uh, in here is my olive keeled flat rock scorpion. So this is Cuddles. Uh, she is an olive keeled flat rock scorpion, one of the largest species of scorpion in the world. Um, she's native to, I believe, South Africa um, and the surrounding countries. She's about um, four inches long at this point, and I believe she's gravid. I've had her about two years, got her at Herps Austin uh, two Augusts ago, something like that. Uh, and she has not had her babies yet, but they have a gestation period of about two years. Um, she eats dubia roaches, or no, she eats... Uh, adult crickets whenever she gets the chance. Uh, she's a very finicky eater, uh, very sensitive to vibrations, very chill little scorpion. So she's in this little five gallon acrylic setup. I believe it's made by Zoomed. Uh, she's got some slate tiles over here to replicate a uh, natural rock pile in the wild. Little water dish. I just mist her tank every now and then. Refill that like once a month. Um, and then over here in the corner this is a uh, ringtail cat skull uh, found locally on a ranch, uh, so ethically sourced. I did not go out and kill uh, a ringtail cat for this skull. Um, and that is neither a ringtail lemur nor a cat. Uh, for those who aren't from Texas, that is a nocturnal mammal. Uh, looks a lot like a skinny raccoon. Over here, these are not living creatures, but I find them cool nonetheless. This is my little collection of natural history. Uh, over here I believe this is a river cooter shell. Uh, it's about 20 years old, the, or well, it was collected 
uh, about 10 years ago. We think it's been 20 years since the turtle died. Um, this is a little sculpture of a pangolin, uh, some fossils, fish, ammonites, shark teeth. Uh, this is a goblin shark tooth, I believe. Um, there's a nautilus shell back here. Uh, here's a better shot of that. I actually preserved both of these myself, and I'll be making a video uh, detailing how to do that uh, at a later date. These both died of natural causes, uh, and I just thought I'd put them to good use. Over here, a little sculpture of an otter, a uh, North American river otter, I believe, and up here, some more fossils, fish, ferns. This is a nice big plaque, uh, and I'm not certain what these are, uh, but I believe I see spines and ribs, so probably fish. And last but not least, it's not a reptile at all, uh, actually a reptile feeder, uh, but this is Gus Gus the Rat. I actually got her pretty recently from a friend um, who couldn't take care of her uh, as well as they wanted to anymore and decided to give her away to a different home. So she ended up with me. She will not be snake food. Um, she is a pet only animal. So she's in this big three-story custom cage was built for sugar gliders some years ago. Um, and she's just eating seed mix and formulated rat pellets. Uh, and she also gets, you know, uh, table scraps and stuff as treats. But she is a very cute little animal, uh, and she's actually right next to my bed, so she's always pestering me uh, as I go to sleep. And uh, she is not friendly to any fabric or anything you leave next to her cage, but very cute little animal. I'm glad to have her. So I believe that's just about it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching, if you've stuck through uh, however long this ends up being. But uh, that's it. That's the whole collection at the moment. Uh, be sure to subscribe if you want to see more. I will be uploading care guides to most of the animals seen here, probably sometime throughout the summer. Uh, and we've already got quite a few other videos. Um, and we just passed 1,000 subscribers, so thank you for that. Um, if you'd like to join the ranks, go ahead. Uh, there will be a subscribe button up here shortly, and links to a few other videos you can check out. You can also find me on Instagram and Redbubble where I sell some art at Afro Herb Keeper. Thanks for watching.